Today's a variety workout, so we're going to do a bunch of different workouts. It's our kind of variety day, um, and we're going to throw in uh, everything. So uh, let's get started and uh, get moving here. So on the setup, you guys, again, I'm going to keep this tape here, right, to measure where my uh, chain is supposed to go through. And then on the slide, measuring the tape six inches out from the heels. Okay, see how that's before the heels. You never want to hit your heels. Uh, the heels never want to hit your seat. So you want to have that gap and that right um, angle. So coming forward, strong core, right? And coming and uh, making sure you're not hitting the heels. You're not whipping back and forth here. You want to compose up the slide. And we'll work on that today, actually. That'll be one of the uh, variety. We haven't worked on that slowing the last six inches of the slide, as we call it. Approaching the catch, you want to slow the last six inches. Um, we have that's a, that's actual rowing saying, and you're not really slowing, but you're you feel like you are, and that'll hold you back or kind of help you as you approach that catch. So let's go ahead and tie our. Look, we won't tie in today. We're gonna go feet out uh, as part of our variety just to start this up. So like first ten minutes, let's go feet out rowing. So you're not gonna tie in. Um, and remember on the damper setting, you're three to six, okay? If you have the water rower or any other machine that doesn't have the resistance setting on the damper, just leave it. Um, but for concept two, three to six, so we're gonna row out here, breathe and push, and just row your feet out and staying connected. As you guys know, I like to row the first few minutes here. Gotta stay active. Gotta keep moving. So feet out, growing, stay connected. Feet are up against the cookboards, you're feeling pressure on the bottom of your feet. Try and point the toes. So you stay connected. Breathe, push. Nice long strokes. And let's go arms only. So just the arms here in and out. Keep the knees down flat, extended. Now some people have questioned me in, in classes over the years and said, well, you don't put your knees all the way down, they're not locked. And you guys, locking's a funny word in the fitness world because locking and extending are the same term. So I, then I, I tell people, I go, let's go body over here, swing over, and you want to keep the knees down, extended, straight, and yeah, locked. They're down, you guys, they're flat. Now locking is a funny word because it's, a, it's like almost a negative term, right? So I get that negative kind of response. And then I reply and I say, yes, it's, a, it's extended, like a leg extension. So right here, just let's pause the finish right here. The legs are extended. 
they're straight. Just like you would go, and here's my perception reality, my um, analogy, going to the gym and seeing a leg extension. What happens? Boom, leg extended, boom. Just like you would at the gym with the leg extension workout. Yeah, the leg comes out straight. When you do a squat, what happens? When you do a squat, you're coming down to the ground, you come up, and you go straight, okay? Extended. You guys, in competition for squats at certain events, just take a second here to explain this. If, at competition, when they're counting your squats, they have judges. If you're like this at the, at the top of the squat, that, that, that squat doesn't count. You have to be straight, extended, down, locked, yeah, down, flat, okay? So those knees are flat, and you're coming right through. So try your best to take a look every once in a while, again, if you have that mirror, and keep those knees down. And it's hard. Everyone kind of does it, kind of get lazy a little bit. I'm definitely a culprit, but you need to try to keep those knees flat and down, not bouncing around and breathe. And, and really just flex your quads and that'll solve it and just stretch over. Okay, now let's go to quarter and the quarter slide. You're barely breaking the knees. Now you can come up and kick the legs. And same thing with the, the arms. People will say, well, the arms aren't, and let's stop right here, the arms aren't locked. I go, yeah, they're extended, they're straight. The arms are straight. Extension, straight. Water skiing. I use the water ski analogy. When you see people water ski like this, what, what do you think? It's their first time, novices, right? When you see people water ski like this, pros or seasoned, right? They're hanging off, they're using the legs, they're being efficient. When you're like this, you're unbalanced and you're weak, you're in a weak position. So you wanna be extended, you wanna be out, you wanna hang through your lats, and yeah, the elbows are straight or locked. I like to get people's attention sometimes with the lock because they're like, oh, that's bad, that's bad. No, it's not. It's the same as, it's the same meaning as extended. It's just how you use it. So when people say that, I'm like, yeah, no, it's, I'll explain it. So be extended, out, hang, through. Quarter slide, feet are still out. Half slide here. And you can always get better at this. Half slide, handle to the toes, breathe, push. Take a look. Take a look at what your elbows are doing. Take a look at your legs. quarters. Feet are out. Pushing hard. Full slide. Breathe, extend it out. Try and keep those feet planted to the footboards. And let's go front end, stay forward. Legs only, hook the heels, you guys, hook the heels so 
you can kind of stay in with the feet out. Push, kick, strong core, shoulders relaxed. Keep those arms straight. Try not to death grip the handle, light grip. Open up and add the arms. Let's just add the arms here. Breathe, full stroke. Arms only, arms only here, in and out. So if you're a rower from high school, national team, collegiate, whatever, you'll know that rowing feet out is one of the best drills you can do to automatically make you better, to get a better connection off that footboard, off the feet. Now, if you're new, if you're beginning, it's also just as good, even better, because you're just learning how to row and learning how to uh, apply that pressure on the feet, but just keep pushing through. The harder you push, the more you'll get out of it, because it'll force you to finish. All that momentum, it'll force you to finish here, okay, because you can't finish back here, you'll come out, you'll, you'll come out of the feet. So right when you start losing connection, that's your finish. And then it'll force you to get more forward angle or more forward kick through here. Because that's that's where you you can get it. That's where it's forcing you to get it, which is good. You want it through here and then extending and then going whoa and holding on to it and really pushing through the legs and getting the most out of that stroke. And know you guys that the most power we went over this last week. The most power, if you look at the curve, when it peaks, the curve peaks out right here. So it's like the, the most power you're getting peaks right when the legs are coming down and your arms are coming through. This is your peak right about here, maybe through here, okay? This, it comes down. It starts coming down. You're trying to accelerate through, but your arms aren't able to sustain the power the legs are. You're trying to get the legs sustaining all the way through, okay? Just like you're to jump off the ground, when you get to that higher level, you kind of go slower, right? You don't keep accelerating. So the power is generated midway through, and then you're trying to hold on to it without trying to get more at the end. Try not to do that, okay? It's one solid stroke through. So let's go back to full slide. Feet are still out. And arms will be back here. So a little uh, quick pick right through the sequence one more time and then we'll tie in. So just arms only, feeling connection on the bottom of your feet. Let's go body over, swing. Talking a bit more today because it's a variety of drills, workouts, specialized things to do on the Roy machine to help you become better. And these are really important. Everything I'm talking about, there's like a hundred things to talk about. You probably didn't know rowing was so technical. There was so much to it. But just like golf, just like tennis, just like hockey, all those strokes, shots, whatever, they all have a lot going on. We all know that. A rowing stroke is no different. So keep those knees down, connect, 
and breathe. Let's go quarter slide. So it's really respecting the sport, respecting the stroke, and trying to get the most out of it. Be patient with it. Half slide. Three quarters. Slide. And easy. So we'll tie in, guys, get some water. Breathe. Keep it going. Keep moving through. And we'll tie in. Tie in both feet. Make sure you're staying hydrated. You're eating well through these difficult times. So tie in both feet. Going over that perfect stroke again. I like to do this uh, pretty much almost every class just for a uh, a few seconds coming through, back end, right? Core strong, kind of absorbing the handle. Okay, chin level, shoulders relaxed, comfortable back here, sitting back, good. And then coming out, hands away, swinging forward, knees are straight down, flat, extended right. And then you're coming up, you're creating that box, right, we talked about. Then you're coming up, and here's where you kind of, and we're gonna work on this today, where you kind of, Rush, it's called rushing the slide, or you're out of control, or you dive, right? Or you lunge, and you don't want to do that. You want to stay composed. You want to slow this down and kind of glide up so that you can catch and start the next stroke. In that perfect stroke, you guys driving the legs first, connecting through the hands, light grip, shoulders relaxed, hooking through the lats, engage, core strong, and then feet, seat, and hands all moving together, driving through. And I like to simplify it two parts, right? There's three or four you could go, but I like to simplify it two and, and really make it simple and go lead with your legs, lead with the legs and then the rest. Simple, boom. And then put it into one stroke, just one drive, okay? But you're leading with the legs. It also kind of goes with lead with the legs, okay? So lead with the legs, push through, and then fast to the finish without trying to get more. Accelerate to the finish without trying to get more, okay? Very hard to do. Okay, let's go ahead, full stroke. And feet are in, should feel good now. Get a little more power. Feel connection on the bottom of the feet. Still warming up, just taking our time. arms only. So just arms in here, in and out. Getting that workout, you guys. Breathe every day. Body over here, stretch out, keep those knees down. Handle level, going across the shins.
today I'll have a sort of a finite theme. We'll narrow it down. It's full of variety, but I want to narrow it down so we have some focus on just a few things that we haven't talked about uh, over the past week. Let's go quarter slide. And that will be slowing the last six inches of the slide prior to the catch. So you're not rushing. In rowing, that's probably the one, number one. One of the most common mistakes, errors, that rowers or athletes will make is rushing the slide. Let's go half slide. Number two, we'll focus on length. Getting long strokes without reaching or diving. Or falling into the stern is what we call it. You don't want to fall into the stroke. You want to be composed, strong, core, stretching through, not reaching. Good. Three quarters. Full slide. here, breathe just the legs only. And the last one, number three, I want to talk about, I want to focus on today is catch timing. So how well can you hook? How well can you feel? Can you connect the seat, the feet, and the hands together? And we'll, work, we'll use the power curve on the monitor to try to fix that problem or help you fix that problem. Good, open up, but no arms. So keep the arms straight. And open up out of the arms. and breathe. So let's do, uh, we're going to split this up into three segments, 10 minute segments for each drill. And we'll row hard, we'll progress, we'll go easy and then we'll row hard each one. We'll focus on one thing <clears throat> per 10 minutes. <clears throat> Get some water and stretch. You don't have to set anything up to your monitor today. Uh, just see the power, see what you're doing real hard. Make sure you're stretching, you guys. Really important hamstrings, stretch and breathe. And for this first uh, lesson, we're gonna focus on, um, right, the catch, driving through, 
uh, not rushing, okay? So not rushing the slide. So breathe here and stretch. Get some water and then we'll go through it. Um, so how do we do that? Well, one is using the tape. Mark your slide six inches from your heels, okay? If you haven't done that, don't worry. You could do it next time. But you're marking your, your tape so you're not hitting your heels the catch. And we'll go through this in sequence. So go ahead and tie in. Grab the handle. So the most common, one of the most common errors is rushing the slide and rowing. And it looks like this. This is the error I'll show you and then I'll show you the correct style. So I'm going to row about 10 strokes incorrect and then pause, describe it, then row correct. Okay. So incorrect rushing the slide. Watch. that so incorrect you're diving you're coming up here and you're speeding up you're diving you're rushing it's a very common error in rowing in a boat momentum is coming you're you're not you're out of control you're not following you're rushing okay and the correct way to do it your shoulders are coming forward everything is is just you know diving down Everything is falling apart, your core, everything is weak. So the correct way to do it is by, is by telling yourself, I'm going to slow the last six inches. You're not really slowing, you're just telling yourself to slow. And I'll show you at a lower rate to really get, get the point across. Okay, so coming out. That's the correct stroke. It's a low stroke. I was at 20. But I'm trying to show you the difference in ratio. Fast drive legs coming up slower and not changing speeds on your recovery or on your um, on the recovery on the recovery of the stroke. You're not changing. You're not trying to rush up. It's a ratio. It's it's almost two to one. If you're at a, you can count your strokes. You can count a ratio per stroke. So it's drive so what coxes will do or what coach will do the count three count so i'll count it off for you at a 20. if you want to follow me we can go together ready go so it's three two one three two one three two one or better one two three right so we'll start at the back here I like to count backwards. Ready, row. It's one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And that'll help you count each segment of the stroke. One, two, three. And at times you're segments of the stroke okay so you're not rushing up you guys rowing has ratio it's not a ping pong match even at a 44 there's a little ratio you gotta send it send it through you're getting ready as you extend the arms you're getting ready for the next stroke you need to allow yourself to get ready for the next stroke it's not just boom 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 ratio okay not only for rowers, but for in, uh, indoor rowers as well. Okay, it'll help you be more efficient. It'll help your rhythm. It'll help the way your body's designed to, to row. So ratio, so try that count. Three, two, one, or one, two, three, however you want to do it, backwards or forwards. You may want to do it forward again. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, 
Good. And also remind yourself, and maybe you put a piece of tape midway on the middle of your machine to help when you click over that to remind you to be like, oh, okay, I can't speed up here. I got to slow down. So it's going to be annoying, but maybe you, you click and you're like, oh, okay, now I got I to gotta control. Not control, but, you know, float. I got to float up. You got to be composed. So coming up, float, compose, boom, three. I don't like the word control. Float, okay? Compose, okay? Ease into the stern. As Coxes would say, ease into the stern. Don't rush. So again, so let's try that uh, not rushing, okay? So here we go again. And we'll go 10 on, 10 off through this segment. So you can get a, a and follow me at the lower rate. So really get a sense of that, of that uh, ratio of that not rushing the slide. Okay, ready? From the back end, ready? Rope. And we'll go ten hard at a twenty-four right here. So twenty-four. Again, 24, same thing. Nice solid ratio. And count in your head, however it works for you. Three, two, one, right? So driving on the one, two, three, or the other way around. Whatever works for you. It's a three count though. And we'll pump it up. Uh, to higher stroke rates here in a bit. Let's go 24 though right here. Stay solid. Push 24. Kind of get in the swing, hang the rhythm. There's a reason why the elite rowers row a certain way. Do not try to reinvent the wheel and don't try to do your own thing. That's just a recommendation, but that's, I think, coming from any professional. Do what they do. Try to be emulate the best okay don't do your own thing try to copy what the best rowers are doing in general right but i will tell you this this is something every successful rower has to learn if you're doing this you're not going anywhere you've got to have ratio or you're definitely not i don't care how strong you are Voslav chalupa uh, rob waddell those guys powerful as hell, they still have ratio, okay? They may row differently, my hey Drysdale, they still have ratio. You gotta have ratio. Don't fight it. Let's go 24 one more time. Here we go. 10 strokes. Ratio, and I'll count it. One, two, three. One, two, Three, 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 good. 
See how the count's a little quicker, but there's still two to one. And remember, in the head in your head, this will force you to control, again, to float up that last second part of the, of the slide. Okay, compose, compose. Count is a little bit of, you're controlling the count, right? But you're composed and you're floating up the slide. So again, let's go. Again, one more time, 24. Here we go. Count on your own. Good. And easy, breathe. This time we'll go up. We're gonna go up to a 30 for one or two sets. And I want you to feel ratio out of 30. Now everything's a little bit faster. You gotta drive the legs down quicker. This, the ratio count will force you to get Get out of bow, get out of stern, right? Kick through, kick fast. Boom, accelerate all the way through. One count, it's gotta be quick. Again, no coach ever said in my history of rowing, your legs are too fast on the drive. Your legs can be always, can always be faster driving from here to here. Remember that on the one count. Try not to get back and look through here though. Extend, get the power from the legs and come through fast, right? Hold on to it. Let's go. Let's go to 30. Ratio. Quick legs. get by higher watts, I hit 370, almost 400 there, without thinking about it. Just thinking fast legs down, better ratio. Okay, second drill, going over length, this one's a big one. Okay, when you might say in your back of your head, but Jack, I'm short, that doesn't matter. There's a lot of short guys or girls that are rowing that are doing really well, that are going very fast. You don't have to be 6'8", 240. I know plenty of guys who are six feet, almost a foot shorter, and going just as fast, okay? Also, work with what you have. Work with what you have. There was a guy on the team, uh, when I was rowing, he was a lightweight rower, his name was Steve Tucker, fast as hell. Okay, Akil, again, a single skiller, not very, Big guy, fast as hell. So you can be very fast and work and not have a lot going on, okay? No offense to those guys, but very quick, light, smooth, right? You don't have to be big, strong, tall, okay? Work with what you have. So on that note, now you gotta be long, okay? Your heels, you guys can come up, okay? So just so you know that. If you're not flexible, I'm really flexible. So just so you get a, a reference, my legs are down, watch my hands. All the way over, almost the handle. I'm very, look at my knees, okay? I can palm my hands on the ground, blessed with good, um, what do you call it? Uh, I'm just able to stretch out really well. I'm very limber. So, but that's not an advantage, okay? There was a guy 6'8 on our team, he couldn't, he would be like, ow, I can't move this far. 
but he was able to get long because you can bend your legs and you can get that length. So that being said, at Cal, we really pride ourselves on uh, long strokes, okay? Very long, without extending or stretching out. And how do you do that? You gotta think about it first. Try to uh, relax your fingers, here's a tip, to, so that they hook, you see that? They hook, the thumb is underneath still. Instead of death grip, you wanna hook the fingers. Okay, that'll give you about an inch. Also, the pinky is hanging off the end of the handle, so you're staying relaxed. Your shin's vertical, you guys, you're coming up. Your shoulder's relaxed, your chin is level, and you're getting right up there, okay? This is not a comfortable position, you gotta get up. And then pushing through. Now, getting length, you have to just try in your head to think about, I want another inch, I want another inch, I wanna get longer, I wanna get a little longer. Without trying to dive or reach, and you don't wanna reach like this, or here, you want to stretch out from the beginning, stretch out, hang through, and get that length. But you have to think about it. It's not natural, it doesn't come automatically. Again, your heels can come up. If you have any questions, you want to come after me, like message me and be like, hey, I got all this evidence that says no, go ahead. I've got evidence that says yes. Your heels, you guys, the company made it so the heels can come up. Not everyone's flexible. So if your heels come up, you're pushing off the ball of your feet through the entire foot, okay? And through. The most powerful rowers in the world, their heels come up. So your heels can't come up. Just don't make sure that you're not coming up underneath, okay? Make sure you're set, you're ready, your length. Hook the fingers around. Get length. So on these next 10 on, 10 off, I want you to think about getting a little more length without trying to, without diving or reaching. And also with your shin staying vertical, okay, not overextending, and your seat not coming up underneath here, you want to keep back. And another trick, you guys, try and scoot up on the front of your uh, seat so that you're right on the front of the seat. That'll help you get more front angle okay and help you stretch out even more but think you have to think about it every stroke get longer get longer get more compose stretch out stretch out every stroke okay so keep that in mind let's go 10 on 10 off here at a 28 10 on and think length think length long strokes make a difference Good. See that difference? You have to think about it though. Also, try not to bounce. The reaction is when you get that, you get that much forward, you get that much momentum coming forward. Again, float up that last six inches without bouncing off your, your quads. So when you get that much forward, what happens? You start bouncing a bit. Don't do that. Okay, strong core, set, focus, think length, but also think, hey, I got to get out of here. I got to be able to jump from this angle. Focus on that. How do I do that? Don't bounce. Get long. Right? It's, it's, it's difficult. You have to keep practicing, you guys. 10 on, 10 off. Let's go again. Three, that's 10, 28, length, length, try and follow the handle, hook the hands, hook the finger,
You don't have to follow me exactly. I'm 6'3", 220 roughly, so I'm a little bit, I'm actually on the short end for rowers now. But again, you're just getting length, you're working with what you have. But you're maximizing your effort. You're maximizing your length. You're not rowing shorter than your effort. This is so important, you guys. You want to get better with less effort? Get more with every stroke. Don't row short. Get long. Every stroke, think length. Here we go. 28, again. Push. Get way past those toes without reaching. Stay composed. Don't belt. Good. And breathe. One more time. So you're getting more power with every stroke. Hopefully you're noticing that. Hook the hands. Hook the fingers. No death grip. Again, that takes practice, right? You can't just automatically do that. If you're familiar with weightlifting or anything like that, your forearms will be strong and you're able to do that better, but be patient with that. Okay, again, one more time. Let's get even more in length. Every stroke, think about length. Not back here, you guys, either. Don't try to get more length back here. This is no go. Do not do that. Up here is where you want it. Up at the catch. Length of the catch, same finish on the back end. You're not trying to come back here or handle up. No, none of that. No, no, no. 28, here we go. Power is up here. Finish through, accelerate, but power is up at the front end. See where my handle's going closer to the flywheel. 28, let's go. Make it the best yet. Good. And easy. Okay, our grand finale, third aspect, one of the toughest to master. You're connecting essentially three parts of your body. In the rowing stroke, you're using 87%, something like that, 86% of all your muscles are engaged. In the rowing stroke, that's why it's one of the best workouts, but how do you put it together? Golf, right? Hips, baseball, hips, every stroke, it requires the whole body to work together. You're not just throwing a ball like this. How do you get the baseball going 100, 100 miles an hour, a pitcher? You don't just throw it. Your whole body is working in sequence together to propel that object. You're trying to propel the fan or the blade through in through the water, through the air to get more power created, okay? So there's connection and the machine has a tool to do that. So if you're on a concept two, it's a cool trick here, but you probably already know it, but it's the power curve. Go to menu back. This is a great tool to use on your own for a self-coaching mechanism. Now it doesn't show you where your disconnect is, but it'll show you uh, when it is or when when it's happening. Each stroke is happening. So you have to fine tune it and connect better. So it's either the seat is going too quick forward, you're pushing the legs uh, before the arms, the arms are tugging, or it's a combination of everything. So let's set up any back. 
and it's just row, you guys, just row, and then press change display till you get to a graph that like this, and it has kilograms and pounds. Okay, kilograms and pounds is a graph, change display till you get to there, and then just row. Now you want your graph to look like, if you're familiar, Mount Fuji in Japan, it's a perfect mountain. Goes up and down. You don't want any hiccup or any um, heartbeat right in the beginning of the stroke. You want it to be smooth. Okay, it needs to be smooth. And now I have a black backdrop so you can see that. It's got to be smooth, okay? No, no hiccup, no miss, okay? It'll look kind of bad on my like <laughs> drawing. But you want it to be smooth on the top, especially right at the beginning, okay? So let's try that and we'll go 10 on, 10 off. As you approach, you guys, Again, coming up, you're connecting the seat, the feet, and the hands all together. Timing. That's how you get that perfect curve. Seat, or the feet, seat, and hands locked on together. So let's do a, a quick drill here, front end drill, and just go, we call this top end drill, just arm straight out, and just feel that connection. And you'll start seeing the curve. It's a little curve, because we're not going full blast right now. But you'll start seeing the curve go, and you'll see what I'm talking about on the smooth. As it rises, you want that part to be smooth. Okay, and you can do this on your own to help your stroke. This is probably, just putting this together, mastering the power curve, and everyone has a little bit of a different curve, but as long as you have the, the front part going smooth up like a mountain. If you don't know what Mount Fuji looks like, look it up. Google it. It's a perfect mountain. Okay, and let's open up. And you'll start seeing a bigger curve. And now let's put power on it. Try to connect feet, seat, hands together. Master that curve. And try to get that smooth line going up. Smooth line going up the mountain. Let's go 10 for focus. Put some power on it. On this one. 28. So as soon as you put power on it, things kind of start to fall apart, right? It's like with anything. It may look easy in slow motion or with no power, but once you get going, things fall apart. So focus on getting that together. On that one, mine was going up and then dipping a little bit and then coming up, which means that I was kicking here and then there was another part missing. So my legs were going, but then my hands weren't connecting through or my seat wasn't connecting through. Okay, so again, breathe. Focus, I'll be silent here, 28 for 10, go. See how hard that is though? If you hit it once, remember what that felt like. Hit it again, be consistent. If you missed, learn from it. Try and get it back. Just that little miss will affect your power output, make you 
less efficient, will screw with your power and your pace. So you want to make sure you stay consistent every stroke. How many times can you get that smooth rise in the mountain? That smooth line. No heartbeat, no glitch. Let's go again. 10, I'll be silent. 28. Let's go. Hard strokes. was better. Lots of little things make a big difference. For those of you who have weight lifting coaches, yeah, there's a reason why. Rowing's the same way, but there's a lot of different things in rowing. The stroke. Don't just pass it off like, who cares? Learn it, get better at it. Let's go. Last one at 30, let's max it out and get put it all together, you guys. Curve, length, power, push. 30. Ratio. Great job. So, make sure you stretch, you guys. Have a good day. Get some water. Try and eat something within 45 minutes of the workout. And hopefully, you got a good workout. You learn three things ratio, length. Timing. Those are big things, you guys. I've been running for 30 years, okay? At the highest levels. And it's it, it just a lot of patience, okay? But keep trying. Keep at it. And you'll get better. So good job.